When it comes to spray paint, does brand really matter or are all brands pretty much the same? So the question is, is that $15 can really all that much better? Let's get the testing underway and let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which products perform the best on bare metal. Then we'll see which brands block corrosion the best. We'll see how these paints avoid chipping. Finally, we'll see how well these paints hold up after they've been exposed to weather for an entire year. The first set of test panels that we'll be using is bare metal that's been free of rust and contamination. I'll go ahead and apply Rust-Oleum Bare Metal Primer and we'll allow it to cure for 48 hours. Some of these spray paints claim to block corrosion. Others claim to perform as a paint and a primer. So the second set of test panels is perfect for the next test. I used a wire brush to remove as much rust as possible. After applying paint directly to bare metal and allowing it to cure, we'll expose it to the elements. Finally, I'll be painting areas on the old Ford Ranger and we'll see how the paint holds up after an entire year of weather and sun exposure. I'll first wet sand the paint with 400 grit. Then I'll clean the sanded areas with rubbing alcohol. I'll go ahead and remove the front hood so it'll be easier to film painting the front hood. At only 96 cents for 10 ounces, the least expensive paint we'll be testing is made by Color Place and sold at Walmart. It's a fast dry spray paint, interior, exterior, made in the USA with global materials. Shake can vigorously for at least one minute after mixing ball rattles to ensure color uniformity and prevent clogging. Hold can 12 to 14 inches from surface to be painted. Recoat within two hours or after 48. At a price of only $3.96 for 12 ounces is this Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch. 2X, ultra cover paint and primer, fast drying indoor and outdoor, wood, metal, plastic, and more. Made in USA. Hold can 10 to 16 inches from surface and spray in a steady back and forth motion, slightly overlapping each stroke. Keep the can the same distance from the surface. Keep the can in motion while spraying. Apply two or more light coats a few minutes apart. Apply a second coat within one hour or after 48 hours. The third least expensive paint we'll be testing at only $4.29 is this Krylon Color Max Paint and Primer. No runs, drips, or errors. Dries in 10 minutes or less. For metal, wood, plastic, and more. Prevents rust, we're gonna test that. Made in the USA, with global materials. Hold can 8 to 10 inches from surface. Spray in a sweeping motion from side to side with slight overlap. Surfaces can be sprayed at any angle. Apply multiple thin coats. Wait one minute between each coat. Dries in 10 minutes or less. At a price of $5.98 for 15 ounces is this Rust-Oleum Professional. It claims to be a high performance enamel. 15 minute fast dry. Any angle spray. Tough enough for industrial applications. High output tip, 50% faster coverage. Made in the USA. Hold can upright 10 to 16 inches from surface and spray a steady back and forth motion slightly overlapping each stroke. Keep the can the same distance from the surface. Apply two or more light coats a few minutes apart. At a price of $9.77 for 12 ounces is this Valspar Anti-Rust Armor. Advanced corrosion resistance. Superior coverage and durability. Fast drying, smooth finish. There's no information on a Valspar can indicating where it is made. Hold can 8 to 10 inches from surface. Move back and forth, releasing the button after each stroke. Overlap each stroke. Two thin coats are recommended. Recoat within 4 hours or after 36. The third most expensive paint we'll be testing at $10.87 for just 12 ounces is this Seymour High Tech Spray Paint. General use coating. Made in the USA. Spray surface with steady strokes at least 8 to 10 inches. Several light coats give a better finish than one heavy coat. For best results, recoat within 1 hour or after 48. The second most expensive paint we'll be testing at $12.05 for just 11 ounces is this Magic Diamond Hard Spray Enamel. It claims to level like glass. Made in the USA. Dries in 15 minutes or less. Recoat before 24 hours or after 7 days. Finish is fully chip resistant in 7 days. And the most expensive paint we'll be testing is $15.02 for just 10 ounces. This industrial workday paint is made by Sherwin-Williams. General purpose, interior, exterior, use on wood or metal surfaces. Smooth, durable coating. Made in the USA with global materials. Hold the container upright 10 to 12 inches from the surface. Do not apply with a continuous spray. To avoid runs, apply several thin coats. It's been right out a week since I applied the paints. They're fully cured and the front hood is back on the Ford Ranger. So let's take a closer look at each brand. All the paints are supposed to have a high gloss finish. With the color place, you can see a paint can shadow, but there just isn't a very good reflection. Wow, check out the Rust-Oleum 2X. That's a very clear reflection. As you can see, when it cures, it leaves a nice high gloss finish. The Krylon definitely did a better job than Color Place, but not as well as the Rust-Oleum 2X. The Rust-Oleum Professional has definitely done the best so far. The finish is very high gloss and very smooth. Valspar is definitely better than Color Place and Krylon, but not quite as good as Rust-Oleum 2X or Rust-Oleum Professional. Seymour has done a very good job and looks to be about the same as the Valspar. Unfortunately, the Magic Diamond just did not do very well compared to most of the other brands, finishing behind Seymour. Unfortunately, the very expensive Sherwin-Williams paint finished in next to last place just ahead of Color Place. 
In this next test, we'll test the impact resistance of each paint when a .177 caliber ball hits each panel at 238 miles per hour. The color place appears to have experienced a relatively small loss of paint surrounding the impact area, but after removing the paint flake, the diameter of the paint loss area is 4.05 millimeters. There's quite a bit of paint loss with the Rust-Oleum 2X at 4.92 millimeters, so color place experienced slightly less paint loss. However, there wasn't any paint flakes surrounding the impact area. The amount of paint loss with Krylon is the best yet at only 3.45 millimeters. There was a small amount of loose paint surrounding the impact area. Rustolian Professional, just like the 2X, experienced quite a bit of paint loss at 4.44 millimeters. There was a small amount of loose paint surrounding the impact area. Valspar experienced nearly the same amount of paint loss as the Rust-Oleum 2X at 4.85 millimeters. There was a very small amount of loose paint surrounding the impact area. Seymour did a really good job on this test at 4.16 millimeters of paint loss. Almost no loose paint with the Seymour. Magic Paints also did very well in this test at only 3.84 millimeters of paint loss. There was some loose paint surrounding the impact area. Sherwin-Williams did about average at 4.36 millimeters of paint loss. No loose paint surrounding the impact area. When it comes to chip resistance, Krylon came out on top at 3.45 millimeters, but Magic Paints did nearly as well at 3.84. Color Place 4.05 millimeters, Seymour 4.16, and Sherwin-Williams 4.36 millimeters. I've attached a number 9 Mohs hardness pick to the next test device. Adding 15 washers on top, the very sharp tip has a total of 158 grams or just over 5.5 ounces of weight on it. It'll definitely cause damage to each of the panels. So let's see how much damage it causes. And the number 9 Mohs hardness tester scraped all the way through the color place and down to the primer layers. Rust-Oleum 2X on the left and color places on the right. Rust-Oleum experienced a deep gouge but the pick did not reach the primer. It was very close between Rust-Oleum 2X and Krylon but there's definitely more damage to the Krylon paint. And it was very close, but the Rust-Oleum Pro definitely experienced a little less damage than the Rust-Oleum 2X. Rust-Oleum Pro is on the left and the Valspar is on the right. Very impressive job by Valspar, definitely experiencing less damage. Valspar is on the left and Seymour is on the right. And the Valspar holds on to the lead, experiencing less damage than Seymour. Valspar is on the left and Magic is on the right. And the Valspar continues to hold on to the lead. Valspar is on the left and Sherwin-Williams is on the right. And it's Valspar for the win. Assessing the level of damage caused by the most hardness tester is definitely a subjective assessment. Valspar came in on top, Rust-Oleum Pro 2nd, Rust-Oleum 2X 3rd, Magic 4th, Sherwin-Williams 5th, Krylon 6th, Seymour 7th, and Color Place 8th. It's been an entire year since this project started and the sun has taken a toll on some of the brands. And the Color Place paint is badly faded. You can see that some of the paint is rubbing off on my finger. The Rust-Oleum 2X definitely held up a lot better than the Color Place. However, the paint is rough to the touch and there's been a lot of fading. Unfortunately, the sun really took a toll on the Krylon paint. The paint is badly faded and it rubs off very easily. The Rust-Oleum Professional has definitely done by far the best so far. There's still a pretty clear reflection of the paint can. It's very close and almost too close to call, but the Rust-Oleum Pro actually performed slightly better than the Valspar. And the Seymour has definitely done by far the best so far. The paint still looks very bright and glossy compared to the other brands. And the Magic Diamond finished in fifth place just behind the Rust-Oleum 2X. The paint experienced quite a bit of fading over the past year. Unfortunately, the Sherwin-Williams paint really struggled and the paint seems to be just as faded as the color place. So the Seymour finished in first, but Rust-Oleum Pro performed nearly as well. Valspar performed very well finishing in third place, Rust-Oleum 2X fourth, and Magic Paints fifth. It's been right out a year since these panels were stored outside. However, the panels did not experience the same amount of UV exposure as a pickup truck. However, they did get exposed to a lot of moisture and some UV. So up next, let's go and test the impact resistance once again on these panels. I had to repeat the test on the color place panel since two steel balls hit the panel. Before experiencing UV exposure, the size of the color place paint chip was 4.05 millimeters. After a year of UV exposure, the paint chip is quite a bit smaller at 3.25 millimeters. The size of the Rust-Oleum 2X paint chip remained very close to the same size as a year ago at 4.96 millimeters. The size of Krylon's paint chip also remained very close to the same at 3.44 millimeters. The size of the Rust-Oleum Pro paint chip increased from 4.44 millimeters to 4.92. The size of the Valspar's paint chip decreased slightly from 4.85 to 4.76 millimeters. The size of the Seymour's paint chip increased from 4.16 to 5.73 millimeters. The size of the paint chip from the Magic Paints increased from 3.84 to 4.46 millimeters. The Sherwin-Williams paint chip size increased slightly from 4.36 to 4.4 millimeters. 
So after a year of sun exposure, the Colorplace experienced the smallest paint chip at 3.25 millimeters. Sherwin-Williams and Krylon performed nearly the same at 3.4 and 3.44 millimeters respectively. Magic Paints finished fourth at 4.46 millimeters. So the paint brands with the smallest paint chips were also the same brands that experienced the most paint fade. This is a scratch from a year ago, and we'll be adding a new scratch after a year of UV exposure and comparing the damage. On the left is the Colorplace paint after a year of sun and weather exposure, and the paint experienced a lot more damage. The UV exposure hurt the Rust-Oleum 2X, but it performed better than the color place. The Krylon also experienced quite a bit more damage after a year of sun exposure. However, Rust-Oleum 2X experienced less damage than the Krylon. Rust-Oleum Pro has performed the best so far, but the scratch did reach the primer layer in a few small areas. And the Valspar performed slightly better than the Rust-Oleum Pro with only a couple of areas reaching the primer. And the Seymour looks by far the best yet, and the scratch didn't quite make it down to the primer. The Magic didn't hold up nearly as well as some of the other brands with the scratch cutting deep into the primer. Just like the Magic, the Sherwin-Williams also experienced a lot of damage. While assessing paint damage is subjective, the Seymour came out on top, but the Valspar and the Rust-Oleum Pro performed nearly as well. The four brands that finished in the last four positions also experienced the most paint fade. I wire brushed these panels, cleaned them off, and then applied the paints to each one of them. Let's see how well they performed blocking rust. There's a lot of rust on the color place panel. As the rust formed, the paint flaked away instead of forming rust bubbles like some of the other brands. Instead of the paint flaking away with the Rust-Oleum 2X, it appears to have trapped the moisture under the paint, allowing aggressive rust bubbles to form under the paint. Compared to the Rust-Oleum 2X, the rust bubbles on the Krylon were smaller in diameter, but the amount of rusting is about the same. The Rust-Oleum Pro did a terrific job at blocking the rust. No bubbles on the Rust-Oleum Pro, very impressive. The Valspar claims to block rust and it performed nearly as well as the Rust-Oleum Pro with only a couple of very small areas with rust. Just like most of the other brands, the Seymour panel experienced extensive rust damage. The Magic Paints also experienced heavy rusting across the entire panel. Similar to the Colorplace brand, the Sherwin-Williams paint flaked away. This resulted in far fewer rust bubbles. So if you need a paint that'll work well without totally removing all the rust and then applying a primer, the only two brands that performed well include Rust-Oleum Pro and the Valspar. I'm sure there are a lot more brands out there to be tested, so please leave a comment if you'd like to see another showdown, and also let me know which brands you want to see tested. Regarding this showdown, Rust-Oleum Pro definitely seems like the best all-around paint. However, if you have a properly prepared surface, I really like the Seymour. It did by far the best. When it comes to anti-rust properties, Valspar advertises that that's what their paint is supposed to do, and it did a very good job. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.